morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship this day on the 4th of July. Special day uh, in our nation's history, of course, and uh, on our calendar, the holiday that uh, many people uh, look for uh, in the middle of the summer. Uh, and so it's not a very often uh, occasion that we have this fall on a Sunday and we have service, um, but um, we'll uh, do what we can with it. I guess we have a uh, big mention of it and talk a little bit about what freedom means to the Christian. Uh, for, but before we begin, let's uh, look at the announcements. The, uh, regular schedule pretty much during this week, midweek uh, devotion video, so be looking for that along about Wednesday. Uh, but next Sunday is a different schedule because we will not be having service here uh, in the morning at 10 o'clock. Uh, in fact, you will all be encouraged to go to the uh, Melrose, the church at Melrose, the Melrose Church, that's what it's, the name, isn't it? Melrose Lutheran? Yes. It's not a town out there, it's just a rural church. Yeah, but it's one that uh, many people here have attachment to, and uh, it's uh, an annual service they have in the summer. They're resuming that after having been off from last year for the pandemic. And that will be at 1030 out there. So you're encouraged to go out there. There is a dinner following the service. Uh, council meet uh, will be uh, on the 14th. That's a week from this Wednesday. And uh, please continue to remember these folks that are on your prayer concerns, including uh, Reverend, the former pastor, Reverend Barb Keener. Noisy bucket offering today going to the confirmation and youth education programs. This often or always happens on the first uh, Sunday of the uh, month. So we look forward to contributing to that good cause. We begin our service then with the order for confession and forgiveness on page 56. You please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given the Son to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, 
in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, patriotic song and hymn this morning, number 566, My Country, Kiss of Thee. Let us pray to the Lord. 
God of the covenant, in our baptism you call us to proclaim the coming of your kingdom. Give us the courage to behave the apostles, that we may faithfully witness to your love and peace in every circumstance of life. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Our first reading for today is from Ezekiel 2, verses 1 through 5. In 597 BCE, the priest Ezekiel was removed into exile in Babylon. While there he received a vision of God appearing mystically on a chariot throne. Today's reading recounts God's commissioning of Ezekiel during this vision. The prophet is to speak God's word to a people unwilling to hear. A voice said to me, O mortal, stand up on your feet and I will speak with you. And when he spoke to me, a spirit entered into me and set me on my feet. And I heard him speaking to me. He said to me, Mortal, I am sending you to the people of Israel, to a nation of rebels who have rebelled against me. They and their ancestors have transgressed against me to this very day. The descendants are impotent and stubborn. I am sending you to them, and you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Whether they hear or refuse to hear, for they have a rebellious house, they shall know that there has been a prophet among them. The response of Psalm today is Psalm 123. To you I lift up my eyes, to you enthroned in the heavens. Let the eyes of servants look to the hand of their masters, and the eyes of the maid to the hand of her mistress. So our eyes look to you, O Lord, our God, until we show us your mercy. Have mercy on us, O Lord, have mercy, for we have more than enough of contempt. Too much as the scorn of the end of the rich, and of the derision of the proud. The second reading is from 2 Corinthians 12, 2-10. Christians do not boast in their own accomplishments. Rather, Christians' boasting focuses the attention on how the power of Christ is present in our lives especially in times of weakness and vulnerability. No matter what our circumstances in life, Christ's grace is sufficient for us. I know a person in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up in the third heaven, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that such a person, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know, God knows, was caught up into paradise and heard things that are not to be told, that no mortal is permitted to repeat. On behalf of such one I will boast, but on my own behalf I will not boast except of my weaknesses. But if I wish to boast, I will not be a fool, for I will be speaking the truth. But I refrain from it, for that no one may think better of me than what is seen in me or heard from me even considering the exceptional character of the revelations. Therefore I keep me from being too elated. A thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I appealed to the Lord about this, that it would leave me, but he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. So I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecution, and calamities for the sake of Christ. For whenever I am weak, then I am strong. Here ends a reading. Please stand for the gospel. <laughs>
town, and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astonished. They said, Where did this man get all this? What is this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, and brother of James, and Joseph, and Judas, and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Then Jesus said to them, Prophets are not without honor, except in their hometown, and among their own kin, and in their own house. And he could do no deed of power there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. Then he went about among the villages teaching. He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two, and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. He said to them, Whenever, wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you and re they refuse to hear you, as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. This is the Gospel of our Lord. that phrase when you look back at our history 
And we have had quite a bit of shifting around in the various events. And, you know, we just took on this new holiday of Juneteenth, uh, which really relates to a very dark uh, moment. Uh, and that's not a good choice of words either, I think. Uh, a very, uh, let's say, dangerous moment uh, for people, some people in our country and our history. Um, so there's been a, 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 a lot, and what I've come to, this, uh, to uh, learn, not decide, I don't decide, I learn what uh, is there. What I've come to learn is that uh, America has always been a great country. If you look at, you know, the beginnings, the conception of it, it's a beautiful dream. Freedom and equality. Um, opportunities for all. Possibilities. And you then look at the subsequent history and see sometimes the turmoil, but sometimes very necessary to preserve those ideas of that freedom to preserve liberty, to preserve opportunities for everyone. These things are, uh, as uh, Jefferson calls them, self-evident, but uh, I don't know if everybody gets that message. You know, I, there wouldn't be perhaps the turmoils and the hardships and the tough times if everybody could agree all at once on what the true <clears throat> message is. But it seems to me that sometimes the freedom of America does appeal to the darker, uh, there's that word, appeal to the, uh, shall we say, the more negative, oh, that's too modern a word, maybe too sanitized, it appeals more to the, uh, let's say sinful, to the more sinful or the more base uh, aspects of our natures. You know, one thing about any political uh, system in this world, in its history, if you look, it really harkens back greatly whether in the trying to strive against it or in falling into the traps of it, the uh, basic uh, selfishness of human nature. And, and uh, you look at the failings, for instance, of communism or socialism as well as democracies, it is because there are people that are selfish that are either taking advantage of systems or uh, taking advantage of life despite those systems, corruption, and all that, that pervades wherever there are humans. Things are going to sometimes go wrong. This is why we, you know, confess this every week. We are in bondage to sin. We cannot free ourselves. And so what my basic message today is, if you want to make America great again, as we do every day when we wake up, hopefully, strive to make America great, by being good people. We are uh, called to be humble. We cannot make America great unless we are all humble. And rely uh, not on strictly pride and thinking that we're the greatest and that we should be first, but that we're great because 
the ideas that America are founded upon take into account care and compassion and love for humanity. The idea that all people are created equal stems, of course, not just from the mind of Jefferson, but from the tenets of scripture. Just the idea that they are called created beings is a clue that there was a creator. And that these founding fathers turned to that creator in their deliberations, in their prayers, in their carrying out of the laws and the doctrines and the policies of the governments down through the ages when America was the best and always turned to God and praised God not in hollow words but in meaningful activity of determining the ways that we should uh, treat our fellow human beings. Even if we have to make laws to allow for that, to overcome our, our basic instincts and to provide. And not so much, you know, give out aid and assistance as help people to see how these things can be achieved and gained. And when there's a hand up needed, to offer that. But always with our best wishes and kind counsels to help our neighbors. That's how America is best. Amen. Now we turn to him 333, uh, 332 rather, my eyes have seen the glory.
turn to page 64, the words of the Nicene with which we will confess our faith this day. Please stand. We believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not me, of one being with the Father, through whom all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary,
plate and the noisy bucket remain on the back table for the present. Uh, we will sing our offertory, let the vineyards be fruitful. <laughs>
I don't know if there's any special or additional instruction to give. I don't know if we have social distancing at this. If you feel uncomfortable uh, kneeling right next to your neighbor, then allow for some space uh, as you kneel. Uh, or maybe wait to come up, uh, but I don't want to see everyone just sitting there waiting. <laughs> so, I don't know if we can get all 12 rounds, so we'll just do half, we'll do six, and then we'll do the other six. Are you and Lonnie coming down from upstairs? Yes, sounds, we are. Sounds good to me. So you're welcome. Welcome to the Lord's table.
Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. And we pray that in your mercy you would strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. We have our ascending song today, our closing hymn, A Beautiful for Spacious Skies, printed off. It's not in um, our green book, it's in the red book, but we don't have that. So. Thank you. Thank you. 